Hello everyone, this is Ashini from Chinta.com. In this video, I want to talk to you about a topic that is really close to my heart. There are some students who are afraid of mathematics. Actually, according to a recent study, about 25% of all students suffer from this math anxiety. This is not the case with many other subjects. For example, you do not hear that much of English anxiety or history anxiety. But mathematics, on the other hand, you find students all the time who are afraid of the subject. Why is it the case? And as teachers or as parents, how can we help such students? That is the content of this video. But before we go any further, let me just say that I don't think everyone should do mathematics. Of course, there are many other subjects in the world and you can choose to do whatever you like. But for me, there are certain areas of beauty which gets revealed through mathematics. I can only see them through reason. And uh, I wish that all of my students could see that, could enjoy that. And that led me to this question that suppose someone is suffering from math anxiety, how can we help him? And what is exactly happening? That's the first question. And there has been a lot of research in this area. One key research was done in the Stanford University's uh, School of Medicine by Professor Vinod Menon and his team. They found something really interesting. Uh, they took a sample of students from grade 2 and 3 who were given math problems. Some of them suffered by math anxiety and some of them did not suffer of math anxiety. And they did fMRI scans. So te technically they took pictures of the brain while they were doing the problems. And they found something really curious. There is a part of the brain called amygdala. It is like a, it's of the shape of an almond. It's really small, it's a pair of things. And that is usually associated with fear. For example, if we see a snake or if we see a spider all of a sudden, then the amygdala region gets excited and we feel the fear. The students who suffered from math anxiety turns out when they see math problems, the amygdala region of their brain gets excited. So, what happens next? That's very interesting. That's where the key of this problem lies. When the amygdala region gets excited, the regions of the brain responsible for mathematical reasoning, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, for example, they get deactivated or they are slowed down. The working memory region are slowed down. All of the critical reasoning faculties are slowed down. And therefore, when the student sees the problem, he, is, he or she is unable to do it because the weapons are all there, but they are unable to use it because they are sort of deactivated by the excitement of the amygdala region. So it is not right to say right away that these students are not good at math. It's more appropriate to say that they are not able to use those brain faculties required to solve math problems before, because the fear center of the mind is activated. The question is, why does this happen? Why the fear center gets activated? So researchers are not very clear on this, but they have some circumstantial evidence for several reasons. And they point out, one, one reason they point out is um, parental obsession with mathematics. It turns out, there is another paper on this, that if a parent is really obsessed with students of their child's 
um, performance in mathematics, then the child is less likely to, likely to perform well in mathematics. Uh, there is also some relation of the change of the shape of the right amygdala, which is directly associated with long-term family stress and other factors, environmental factors. So there could be many reasons. I often think of this uh, like the story of Karna from Mahabharat. Uh, if you are familiar with Mahabharat, you will directly relate to this. In Mahabharat, in the time when Karna re needed the weapons, his chariot was broken. It was in the mud. And that was the sort of the curse of his guru, Parashuram. So, whether Karna is a great warrior or not, that wasn't even tested because he forgot all the weapons. His chariot was broke, broken. It's like that. Whether the student has the ability to do mathematics, that is not even tested. Even before that, the excitement of the amygdala reduces the effectiveness of those mental faculties. Okay, so this is the problem. So we understand what is the problem. Of course, we have to de-stress the student that all that is fine. But are there specific prescriptions? Can we do specific things to help the student in this scenario? So we try to do some of the, some of the things in the uh, elementary school mathematics programs at Chinta. And we are always very interested in research in this direction. So we internally do uh, such things. So I will suggest some of the things for which there, there are some evidence that they work. But um, there is a lot of work needs to be done in this area. And as parents and teachers, you can also contribute to this. So the first thing that you can do, and this has been proved with some evidence, is that you can assign a personal tutor to the student for a specific area, a amount of time, let's say one month. Maybe the tutor works with the student one-on-one -on -one and he or she doesn't give more problems. They just work on the existing problems, maybe the easier problems and in a troubleshooting mode. So, Basically, through a conversation, like a Socratic conversation with the student, how do you solve the problem? And um, what techniques do you think can be used? And then explaining those things. Understanding alleviates the stress. And it has been also shown by the same team that if this therapy, tutoring, happens over a period of time in a one-on-one -on -one mode, then... Uh, after one month when they conducted the same study, the fear center did not get as much activated as it was happening earlier for the students with math anxiety. But whether this thing will remain, whether the effect of the tutoring will remain over a period of time, that uh, is a subject of research. So that's the first thing. Maybe you can do that. Even before doing that, you can try some other things. For example, you can try math with art. If you want, you can Google the work of Escher. Escher is uh, one of the um, uh, artists from the previous century who created beautiful art using ideas of mathematics. So maybe you can say, okay, these are mathematical objects. Now, can you use your imagination to draw things with it? So combine math and art and uh, engage the student. That's one thing. The second thing that you can do is use puzzles that do not use a lot of calculation, but still use critical reasoning. One example is the Masiyu game from Japan. Uh, Japanese use many games like this. You can uh, Google that again. There is a picture coming up with this talk so you can also see that Masu is a very interesting game there could be other games similar to it use games which do not involve a lot of calculation 
but involves pattern recognition involves critical reasoning and stuff like that that's the second thing the third thing that you can do is use games which require critical reasoning for example chess there is another one which is really good called tangram it's a chinese game again a picture should be there in the video but the idea is this that you want to change the amig affect the amygdala region and reduce the fear that the student was experiencing over time is a non invasive procedures once you do this for a period of time let's say a month or two months then you slowly and gradually move the child to the regular problem solving the fourth idea is open ended questions so there could be different types of math problems math problems which require calculations you have a problem you do some calculation you get an answer that's one type of math problem open ended research focused questions can be very different for example is it true that two numbers can be added two prime numbers can be added to produce any other number for example 20 is 17 plus 3 17 is a prime number 3 is a prime number 20 can be expressed as a sum of two prime numbers can you find out how many ways can a number be written down as a sum of two prime numbers can you do this experiment up to 100 is it at the number of ways increasing if the student is interested in computer science they this can also be done algorithmically this is a research focused question it doesn't have one answer the student has to investigate this over time do not tie down the mathematical performance of the student with a test or do not put pressure on the student and um become obsessed with mathematics that is one of the key things that researchers are saying over and over again maybe the obsession is affecting the amygdala region creating fear and that is stopping the student from using the faculties that are required to solve the math problems they are not even reaching that part of solving even before them that they are shutting down okay so i hope this uh, video has been useful uh, and uh, maybe we can discuss more on this if you have some comments put in the comment section and there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this area and at chinta in our research team we continue to strive toward it thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next one bye